On March 5th, Wuhan Hongxin, a Chinese semiconductor and chip manufacturing company with a total planned investment of more than 15 billion US dollars, officially announced its bankruptcy and laid off 240 employees. The project was the largest chip manufacturing project in China, twice the size of the New York listed SMIC. It was launched in November 2017 and was once seen as the future and hope of China's chip industry, but it fell apart in just four years. It all began in 2018, when the US-China trade conflict started. The US gradually included select Chinese companies such as Huawei in its economic sanctions list, forcing them into a shortage of chip supply. Take Huawei as an example. On September 15th of 2020, the U.S. government banned chips made of U.S. technologies from selling to Huawei. Facing supply shortage, it was once rumored Huawei had to invest in pig farming in China just to maintain its capital flow. In order to get more chips, Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping proposed to launch a new statewide system in technological innovation and research. The National Development and Reform Commission has announced to invest 9.5 trillion yuan in chip research and development, with the same priority as building atomic bombs in the past years. China's plan was to achieve the goal of 70% chip self-sufficiency by 2025, which means the central government will give great loans and national policy subsidies to those who join the chip manufacturing industry. With such support promised, the whole country has joined the huge movement to manufacturing chips. Wuhan Hongxin was established under such a background. However, if we take a closer look at its development history, we may find out that a big scam could be involved. Setting up a chip project is never an easy task. It requires high-end technical talents and specific production equipment, a stable material supply chain, as well as vast land to build factories. Each part involves huge capital and cannot be established unless all the conditions are met. However, the founder of the Wuhan Hongxin project is an ordinary Chinese man with no assets, no related background in the chip industry, and an elementary school diploma. His name is Cao Shan, which according to mainline media could be a false name. In 2017, Cao Shan seized the opportunity after knowing the national policy support for the chip industry and the intention of the Chinese local government to launch chip projects for the sake of political performance. He traveled to various provinces to lobby local governments for partners. In order to brand himself, Cao often carried several business cards with him, pretending to be the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company or TSMC's vice president. He also pretended to be Acer's first vice president in New York. Of course, all of those identities were fake. However, using his silver tongue, he has gained the trust of the government and some key personnel in the industry. In 2017, Cao met a person named Long Wei, who later became the mastermind behind Hongxin. To facilitate cooperation with the local government, they needed to register a company. Therefore, Long found a close friend by the name of Li Xueyan to help. Ironically, Li had sold wine, opened hotels, but has zero experience with chips. So this is how an absurd management team was formed. Long Wei, who had connections, as the chairman, Cao Shan, the opportunist, as the director, and Li Xueyan, the chip nerd, was appointed as the second director and general manager. And none of them has any experience in the chip industry. Surprisingly, Hongxin quickly gained momentum, and later, Cao Shan established another company named Beijing Light Blueprint. With it holding 90% of the shares, the Wuhan Hongxin Chip Company was established in a joint venture with the Wuhan Dongxihu District Government. Beijing Light Blueprint then promised to invest 1.8 billion yuan at that time, which was never actually paid. When the Wuhan Hongxin project first launched, it said it would focus on 14 nanometer chips, and a year later it would make 7 nanometer chips, with a production capacity of 30,000 pieces per month. At present, only TSMC and Samsung have mass production capabilities for 7 nanometer chips, and SMIC, which is supposed to represent the most advanced level of chip production in mainland China, can only mass produce 14 nanometer chips. 
In 2018, Hongxin has been listed as a major local project of Hubei province for two consecutive years. Externally, Hongxin has introduced itself as a 20 billion USD investment project. It launched two phases of plant construction in 2018 and 2019, with a total investment of 52 billion yuan and 76 billion yuan respectively. Meanwhile, the Dongxihu district government, eager to see results quickly, has also given strong support to Wuhan Hongxin. Documents released by Wuhan Development and Reform Commission show that in January 2019, 6.5 billion yuan of investment had been completed by the district government. In March 2019, Hongxin got more than 1.5 billion yuan of investment in one month. Wuhan Hongxin took another step in 2019. It appointed TSMC's former COO, Sang Yi Chang, as the project's general manager. Chang was the most valued technical expert in TSMC and was known as the global chip industry's most popular figure. At the same time, he also poached more than 100 experienced engineers and managers from TSMC and other Taiwan chip companies to Hongxin at three to four times the salary. Moreover, through Sang Yi Chang's previous relationship with ASML, the world leading Dutch chip maker, Hongxin acquired the first DUV lithography machine in China from ASML at a price of 800 million in December 2019. At that time, Wuhan Hongxin was standing at its peak, declaring to repay the nation with chips. But it was also Hongxin that staged the most disastrous incident in the history of the Chinese chip industry in 2020. On July 30, 2020, a document released by Wuhan officials first mentioned that the Wuhan Hongxin chip project has a large funding gap and is at risk of project stagnation due to a break in the funding chain. This document was deleted soon after. However, with more and more people inquiring, on August 28th, Wuhan City Dongxihu District officials admitted that after investigation, the Wuhan Hongxin chip project has been suspended due to broken capital chain. In fact, as early as the end of 2019, Wuhan Huanyu Foundation Engineering took Wuhan Hongxin to court and applied for account freeze and seizure of other properties due to the default of 41 million in project payments. And in November of 2019, more than 50 acres of land use rights of Wuhan Hongxin were seized for a period of three years. Moreover, on January 20th, 2020, Hongxin mortgaged its only brand new and unused lithography machine to Wuhan Rural Commercial Bank for a loan of 580 million yuan. By that time, Hongxin lost its key equipment and suffered a broken capital chain. Sang Yi Chang was disheartened and resigned from Hongxin in June 2020. In an interview with Hong Kong's South China Morning Post, he recalled his experience at Hongxin as a total nightmare. Chang's departure became the last straw that broke the camel's back. In November 2020, Wuhan Dongxihu District completely took over Hongxin by acquiring its 90% stake in the company. The project's engineering contractor is still working to repay Hongxin's 40 million yuan debt. So, where did all the money go? According to an investigation by the mainland media, Public information shows that the project's large revenues, expenditures, and arrear statistics simply do not add up, and about 12.4 billion yuan is missing. It was also found that Hongxin had complicated tied-up interests with a number of other companies, which in turn had intricate ties with the three founders of the project. According to a former employee, Long Wei once confessed the truth after getting drunk. He said he was only earning 10 to 20,000 yuan a month, and if he wanted to achieve his retirement goal of making 100 million, he'll have to take it out of Hongxin. According to the Sky Eye, early in May 2019, Long Wei and Cao Shan quit the management of the company. After leaving Hongxin, Cao Shan bragged to those around him, saying, Taiwanese people, meaning Sang Yi Chang, are so easy to fool. This is just a game and he's just here to take over the mess. Moreover, Cao Shan continued to move around and replicate the chip scam all over China. Since November 2018, Cao has set up more projects, including Zhuhai Yixin, Yunxin International, Hubei Tianxin, Jinan Quanxin, etc. 
Even after Hongxin's crackdown, Cao is still making hundreds of millions of dollars out of these projects. After all, the chip scams have a lot to do with the current system in China. With the tilted national level policy and huge subsidies, coupled with the local government and the excessive pursuit of chips, many real estate companies, cement companies, and other unrelated companies are all joining the chip business, looking for opportunities to make big money. According to statistics, in 2019 alone, the country added more than 10,000 new chip enterprises. In 2020, the annual number of newly registered chip enterprises went up to 22,800, an increase of 195%. In just the first two months of 2021, new registrations have reached 4,350, a year-on-year -year increase of 378%. As of today, there are 66,500 chip-related enterprises in mainland China. In addition, even if these enterprises are revealed to be scams, the local governments that funded them could only endure the losses silently in order to save face. The low cost and low risk of cheating has given rise to a number of similar enterprises, forming a vicious cycle. In May 2020, the proposed 10 billion USD chip manufacturing plant, Chengdu Gexin, was officially shut down. The project lasted only two years. In July 2020, Nanjin Deke, a chip project with an initial 3 billion USD investment, was reduced to a triple unpaid company with unpaid wages, unpaid payments, and unpaid taxes, and is now in bankruptcy and liquidation. Wuhan Hongxin is only a fragment of China's big chip-making scam, and more and more similar stories are coming to the surface. It makes people wonder, how far can a country go when their companies are like this?